You are listening to the Free to Be Mindful podcast, which provides bite-sized tips for busy parents, educators, and anyone working with kids. These real talk conversations focus on mindful living, mental health, and personal growth, helping all to learn, grow, and inspire with mindfulness in mind. I'm your host, Vanessa de Jesus Guzman, educator, licensed professional counselor, entrepreneur, and mom. I'm passionate about helping folks live life with peace of mind and ease of heart while not losing their, well, you know, here we go. Hello, and welcome back to the Free to Be Mindful podcast. I hope that you're feeling good, looking good, and doing better in this world than you were yesterday. So this is episode 96. If you're brand new to the podcast, I welcome you, and I invite you to follow or subscribe to the podcast so that episodes automatically pop up on your favorite podcast listening platform. And if you're a listener... Hey, (laughs) thank you for always coming back and for your support. I greatly appreciate it. So you may already be aware that I like to keep podcast topics relevant to what's happening in the world, and you can listen to them at any time. They'll still make sense. But if you're listening to them in real time, it's actually with what's taking place in the world right now. And this past weekend, we had two days that really stand out. September, in case you didn't know, is Suicide Prevention Month, and September 10th exactly is Suicide Prevention Day. And then, of course, September 11th is September 11th. And living so close to New York City, where I see the skyline wherever I go, it's a constant reminder of what the skyline used to look like and what it looks like now. And we must remember that behind those two tall, striking towers, there were thousands of people working inside them on that beautiful sunny morning in 2001. Just like we must remember that behind every single number of statistic that we hear regarding suicide and suicide prevention, there's someone who is struggling in life. Believe it or not, an estimated 703,000 people a year, 703,000 people a year take their own life around the world. And while these two events have really different, they're on two different spectrums almost, I realize that it's because of two very different reasons. However, the common thread is that these people are no longer with us. And each of these people, each of these statistics, each of these numbers were somebody's child, somebody's parent, perhaps, somebody's friend, somebody's colleague, somebody's loved one. And it's really interesting when we start looking at life, you know, the scope of life, it's interesting how it changes from when we're kids and then from when we're adults. Because as kids, it seems like the days are long and the years are long and, you know, nights are never ending. And maybe it's perhaps because we're constantly learning, right? Our brains seem to always be at use. And then as we get older, the days seem shorter. And it seems like there's never enough time to get everything done, or there's never enough time to spend with our loved ones because of everything we have to do in this short amount of time. And it's really a reminder that life is so very precious. And sometimes though, it seems like we're only reminded of this when we experience a loss, or when we are thinking of suicide or thinking of September 11th or thinking of a natural disaster or when we just lose someone we care for. But when we're in the thick of things, we tend to forget the things that truly matter, the things that are really important to us and the things that we value in life. And because we have so many different upbringings, because we have different personalities, different perspectives of the world, We do find different things important, but there are a couple of different things that seem to be general values of life that we all seem to have. Those things include our health, we value our freedom, security, our friends, our reputation, 
education, achievement and success, our life experiences, having courage, sustainability in life, perhaps dependability, generosity, and so, so much more. And the trick is, how do we keep these aspects of life, these things that we value, how do we keep them at the forefront of our minds so that we can remember to soak in every single moment, so that we can remember to take advantage of these times as we're living them and not just after the fact and not just in reflection or in remembrance of So here are a couple of tips that may help us remember these things and remember to value life as it's happening and not just as an afterthought. So the first is to keep learning. You may already be familiar with my motto of learn, grow, and inspire. And I truly believe that as humans, we are lifelong learners. We never do know it all. There's something always of interest that can come to our attention. And it's up to us whether we want to dive deeper and learn more. The second thing is having balance in life, specifically when it comes to work-life balance. I know we go through different peaks and valleys in life when it comes to work. And it seems as though in young adulthood, perhaps in our 20s or even 30s, there is this culture of hustle culture and really trying to succeed or go up the ladder or really putting our best foot forward and putting as many hours as we can, perhaps because many do not have their own families just yet and they are able to put in all of these hours and all of this time. And then as we get older, perhaps in our later 30s or 40s and so on, as we build our own families, things kind of come into perspective a little bit. And hopefully we tend to have a better work-life balance. But remembering that what we do for work doesn't define each and every aspect of our life. It's just a chunk of who we are, but there's a big chunk that we live outside of work within our family circles, friendship circles, what our hobbies are, what we like to do for fun, and what brings us joy. I encourage you to check out episode 85, where I talk about being fulfilled, not only in work, but also in life. The third tip is throw multitasking out the window. (laughs) I know that many of us pride ourselves in saying, oh, we are excellent multitaskers. And sometimes, yes, we can do many things at one time, but when we take that approach, we aren't giving 100% of ourselves in each one of those things, each one of those balls that are in the air as we juggle them all. We can give 10% over here, 70% over there, maybe 15 over there, but it's never 100% on one thing. When we do, however, put 100% of our intention on one thing, and that one thing can be seeing the sunset go down. Perhaps that one thing is finishing an assignment for school or for work, or even just playing with our kids. When our attention is fully present on what we're doing, we do get a different sense of fulfillment, a different sense of joy from that moment, because we are truly in it, as opposed to just doing a little bit of a lot of things here and there. So being mindful and aware of when we are multitasking so that we can be actually mindful and actually aware of what we're doing in that moment in time. The next tip is taking the time to travel. I know this comes from a place of privilege because not all of us perhaps do have the means or the time or the ability to travel. And it doesn't always require trips around the world. It can even mean scoping out your own town or your own state or the states nearby you. But if you have the opportunity to see different parts of our world within your own country or the different countries on our beautiful earth, it's so worth it. 
It is a big world out there with beautiful crevices in so many different parts of the earth that it is so worth it to take out the financial funds when we have them and to take the time out to just see all the beauty that there is on the globe that we live on. The next tip is is really cherishing time with family and friends and those we love. Sometimes it's really easy to put the people who are most important to us to kind of put them aside because we take for granted and think, but they're always going to be there or they don't mind because they know that we love them. And sometimes we don't take advantage of these moments. And then when it's too late or when it's after the fact, then we wish that we did have more time. So putting our family, our friends, our cherished people in our lives, putting them first and taking out time when we're able to, to spend more time with them and letting them know how we feel about them while we have them is so very important. And the last tip for you is, is showing gratitude. Every night before I go to bed, I rethink of the day and I think of even the smallest moments, the smallest highlights of things that I am grateful for. And they could be the smallest of things like a really tasty meal or the opportunity to talk with someone who I wanted to speak with, or perhaps a beautiful walk or a calm routine, nightly routine, instead of the tears and the screaming. It can be so many different things, but even the smallest of things deserve attention, deserve that highlight, so that we can prime our brains to look for more of that and to appreciate the small things more than we potentially may in our everyday lives so that we can make it happen more and so that we can pay attention to more positives than there are negatives. Our brains are automatically conditioned to look for the negative because it's a survival skill. We have to look for the negatives to know how to keep out of trouble or how to stay out of the way of lions and tigers and bears (laughs) in our day to stay out of the way of danger. It's truly a survival skill. So we really have to put in extra effort to look at the positive things and to give thanks and show gratitude for those positive things so that, again, we can look for more of that or be more aware when those things are to take place. By the way, these are all tips that have to do with mindfulness. Again, paying attention to the right here and right now with kindness, with curiosity, without any judgment. These are all different themes of the concept of mindfulness. So I do hope that these tips are a reminder of things that really we already know them, but it's so easy to forget when we give other things priority. And sometimes we only think of these things maybe after the fact or when it's too late. So my challenge to you is, is to put all of these important things at the forefront, give them acknowledgement, give them time, give give people their flowers while they're still here. And that means for you as well, taking time out for self-care, taking time out to appreciate your own efforts, even when you don't get that appreciation from other people, giving it to yourself counts just as much. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if any of these things resonated with you, or if you have further tips that you'd like to add to the conversation at any point in time, you can always take a screenshot of this episode and find me on social media at Counselor V De Jesus. Tag me and we can continue the conversation there. So right now, regardless of where you are or what you're doing, think of five things that you are grateful for in this moment. Perhaps it's not things that are happening right here, right now, but things in the more recent moments. What happened within the past 24 hours that you're grateful for? What can you give thanks to? Who are you grateful for and why? 
And yes, we can keep it generic to food and friends and family and a roof over our heads, but we can get pretty specific of perhaps it's a great show that you saw on TV today, or maybe you heard a favorite song that you haven't heard in a long time. Maybe it's that person who is pretty serious at work who finally smiles back at you today and actually said good morning. <laughs> or maybe it was drinking your coffee while it was still hot or even warm. Take time today and every day to think of five to 10 things that you're grateful for. And you will see so much that there is in this world working for your benefit and that you can give thanks to. Have a great week. I hope you enjoyed this week's show. It would mean a ton if you took this moment to review the Free to Be Mindful podcast on the platform you catch your favorite shows. That quick and easy act lets me know what you enjoy and it helps others find the podcast too. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you can listen along next week. In the meantime, I welcome you to catch me on social media at Counselor V De Jesus. And as always, remember, in a world where you are free to be anything that you want to be, you are always free to be mindful. Catch you next week.